Academy, Prologue. I felt like my very soul was going to burst from my eyes. The hero I was most interested that made me want to be inspired actually fucking talked to me. I heard Tracer giggle and whisper in my ear. Now you know what I got ex how excited I got. I whack her off. Oh, shut it, Trace, she laughed. No, no, we don't want to interrupt my next story, eh? I paused, along with Tracer, fixing our gazes on him, and him just alone. <laughs> no need to tell you twice. Everyone else along with me and Tracer giggle. Hey, I didn't catch your names. I was internally jumping with excitement at this point. I could hardly in contain my joyous behavior, but I pulled through, clearing my throat. Azara, my friend here is Tracer. Tracer smiles and waves. Nice to have met you. Now, where was I? Tracer finished. You were going to tell us another one of your adventures, sir. Gabriel nodded and proceeded to tell us another. Thirty-five minutes later, down my road to my apartment I was staying in. I liked where I lived. It had a grassland with a river. There wasn't too much society that took over. I walked under a tree to see a small owlet, helpless out of the nest. Poor thing. I looked up where the nest should have been. The tree was bent, so I was able to step up and peer in the hole. There was nothing but scattered feathers and blood. Mm, I'm guessing there was a fight, I say backing down, crouching further to examine the small owl. But then I saw its beak was missing. Lucky for the owl, it was able to breathe. Come on, let's get you healed up, eh? The owl coos and snuggles in my arms, as if it knew what I said. It had black fluff feathers, which I thought was strange because owlets had normally had white feathers. I got home and set the owlet on one of my tables, cleaned up the blood it, that was dripping in my sweatshirt, and the owlet's beak. Oh man, I just I just washed this a few hours ago. The owlet chirped like it was giggling. Oh, you hush, I joked. I walked over to the owlet and put it upside down. Just wanna check. Oh, you're a male. I just wanted to see. I say as I flip, flipped him back upright. He hid his face like he was embarrassed. Sorry, bud. How else was I gonna tell? He chirped and rubbed his talon on his beak. Right. Your beak. Well, lucky for you, I can make you a beak. My dad actually did this to fix a ferret's missing leg once, and it actually worked. I laugh in, in mid-sentence. Okay, this will only take a second, okay? So if you bleed again, just rub your beak on this. I gave him one of my red towels and started to weld a small metal in the shape of a beak with some red design to add finish. But after almost an hour, I was done. <clears throat> okay, hope this works. I hesitantly fit the beak where the original should have been. Phew. Okay, just need to add some stuff so that y as you get older, I can add bigger ones. The young owlet chirped in excitement. After an hour, the outlet started waking up. I put the new beak in, and it looked great. Hey, do you like it, bud? The outlet looked at one of my mirrors that I had in the room. After a minute in examining, of examining, opening, closing his beak, he jumped in approval. Aw, knew you like it. Now, how about some brunch? I think I have some leftover meat from yesterday. I let him on my shoulder and headed to the kitchen. I looked through my fridge, and there was a plate with defrosted meat and plastic wrap. Hey, little guy. How's this, eh? The small owl nodded. I grabbed the meat and removed the wrap and ripped a few pieces for him to tear up. I need a name for you. He looks up at me and looks around, shifting his claws, but looked down at them and made a good tear in the flesh, nearly making it look like the meat was bleeding. Oh, something that describes claws? Mmm, I know, Talon. We both bounced in excitement. Alright, Talon it is then. <sighs> Better get some sleep, eh? Talon shook his head. Oops, I forgot. You're an owl. You're active at night.
I head to my room. Well, just don't wreck anything. Talon cooed. I shut the door and got in bed. Well, ready for the next day. And with that, I dozed off. Routine, Chapter 1 A few years passed. Azara was dozed off in the library, the book on her face to cover the lights shining on her. Feet up on the desk, crisscrossed, Talon calmly laid in her lap, sound asleep. Tracer walked in the room as quietly as she could and went next to Zara. Wake up, sleepyhead! Azara jolt jolted, making the chair go backwards, making Azara fall on the floor in reaction to the Talon. In reaction to this, Talon took flight in a jolt, landing in the desk. Ow! Tracer, really? Azara growled at her younger, more nimble friend. You never know. One day you could be asleep and Team Talon would just come out of nowhere and kill you in your sleep. What then? Azara sighed. I fucking hate it when you're right. Tracer giggled as Azara got back up and fixed herself. Unlike the others, Azara didn't wear armor all the time. She had to look as normal as possible, so she stuck with wearing normal clothes when armor isn't needed. So, what are we going to do today this time? Azara stroked Talon's feathered forehead, making him coo only a little. Mmm, I'm starting to get into paintball. Azara laughed. Tracer, you know we can't do that, especially not here. Tracer sighed. Okay, um, I overheard Mercy talk about she was going to do important stuff. Azara shook her head. It would be rude to interrupt her, you know. Tracer began to grin almost evilly. She's asleep. Azara laughed, but hesitated. She didn't want to get in trouble, especially with Tracer. She causes a lot of mischief and gets herself into trouble with the others. But Azara just couldn't fight back the urge to do it. Okay, Tracer, I'll come in, only... I'm only doing this for you. You owe me later. Tracer smiled to get rid of her evil grin. Okay, bring Talon with you. I got a plan. She dashed off. Azara and Talon looked at each other in confusion, but shrugged it off. Come on, bud. Let's go get into trouble. She sighed as, as Azara let the owl on her shoulder. Tracer and Azara side-peeked into Mercy's office. The upper half of Mercy's body lying on the desk. Okay, here's the plan. I want Talon to grab this little balloon and hover over Mercy. It should be light enough for you to be able to fly over her. Azara shifted her wings. Let me guess, that balloon has water in it? Tracer's smile grew wider. Even better, it's cold water with ice. Azara wanted to burst out laughing, but she covered her mouth and looked over at Talon holding the filled balloon to him. Careful, Talon. Your claws, with your claws, this thing is easy to rip. Talon nodded and took the balloon from Azara while flying ever so quietly, flapping his wings over Mercy. Okay, Talon. On three, you drop it. Talon nodded. One, two, three. Talon dropped the filled balloon and flew away as fast as he could. Azara and Tracer ducked behind the doorway wall as Mercy shrieked. Oh, Jesus, that's cold! Tracer, Azara! Mercy yelled. Time to run! Tracer dashed for it, Azara flapping her wings as quickly as she could to get away, being shortly followed by Talon. Three minutes later, Azara and Tracer were sitting in one of the living rooms when Mercy comes in. Sorry, Mercy. I just wanted to, I don't know, have fun. Tracer hung her head low in shame. I just wanted to be there for her. Azara and Talon hung, hung low as well. Mercy sighed. It's okay, guys. I guess it's just water. Tracer and Azara laugh, Mercy following with giggles. Come on, let's have something to eat, eh? Mercy walked off and with Azara and Tracer closely behind with Talon. Gabriel, what have they done? Chapter 2 The alarms without warning went off. Mercy, Azara, and, Tra and Tracer, and Talon rushed as quick as they could to the computers. 
Winston, what's wrong? There was a computer showing Winston with a worried look. It's the Academy. Talon decided to raid it. You guys are the nearest ones. We want you to go there as soon as possible. Backup will be on their way shortly. The group got off the chat with Winston and rushed to get ready. Here, Talon. I made these for a time like this. She put a helmet and metal claws that fit on Talon's claws perfectly like a glove to make them even sharper. Don't worry, it won't slow down your flight speed or agility, so it should be fine in the air. Azara puts on the last of her armor, which I won't be featuring because I don't, because because she won't have them for long. Talon let out a shriek, ready to fight. As was Azara. wasn't This wasn't her first mission, but it was her first mission involving Talon, the rogues, not the bird. Mercy and the others arrived at the academy. It wasn't too damaged besides broken windows and busted wires. Come on, split up for more ground. Azara and Talon flew to the tech rooms, where most of its info was. Mercy went in the assembly rooms while Tracer speedily checked the teachers' offices and classrooms, etc., etc., for people that were in trouble. Azara felt uneasy in the dark tech room, but the lights got hacked by Sombra, so there wasn't anything Azara could do for more sight. Talon shrieked in aggression. I know, buddy. You can look in that other room and see if there's students in trouble. Talon flew off in the huge room next to the tech room. After a few seconds of snooping around in silence, there was black smoke in the room that formed into a man in a white mask which towered over her. Zara stumbled back. Who? Wait. You're a Reaper, aren't you? Reaper nodded. <laughs> Looks like the Academy got one thing right. Azara growled. I won't let you harm anyone! She hissed, taking, taking out her modified version of an assault rifle. Reaper, in response, took out his shotguns. Oh, really? All alone? Your death will be fun. Azara smiled. Who said I'm alone? Reaper sat up in shock of her response. Talon! Suddenly Talon flew in, his claws aimed right at Reaper's mask. As Talon strikes him, he lets out grunts of annoyance and pain. His mask started to get claw marks while Azara shot him. He tried to take cover from the bird and Azara, but Talon always managed to reach him. This is when Reaper had enough. As Talon tried to come back for another pass, Reaper hit the owl aside, out of the air, Talon slamming in the wall. Azara rushes to Talon using her wings to block Reaper from him. How dare you! Reaper, without hesitating, hit Azara, slamming her to the wall. But as she hit the wall and slid off, there was a crack in the wall. Azara took off, took off her mask, mouthpiece to reveal blood dripping from her mouth. <coughs> if you're going to kill me, just do it already, Azara panted between her words. Reaper pointed a shotgun at her. Well, that was boring. I fought better. But for a split moment she had left, she spat out these words, making Reaper freeze long enough to listen. You're not as great as Gabriel. He had honor and dignity that you don't have. Reaper has not heard that name for a long while now. He didn't like hearing that name. Everyone knows he's dead. But in that moment, that the tone of voice Reaper used made Azara gasp and begin to cry. Wait. Reaper didn't take his gaze off of her, not even to blink. It's me, Azara, remember? You visited the Academy many years ago. In fact, you guys started to visit us often. Reaper lowered his shotgun. Azara... You... you're in Overwatch now? Azara nodded and smiled a little. Y yeah me and Tracer became Overwatch members not too recently ago, maybe around three to two years back. Reaper completely lowered his shotgun now to the point where he had to, where he put them away. What's the owl's story? Azara sighed. I saved him when he was an owlet. His family got in a fight with other owls over territory and left him to die. His beak was missing, so I gave him a metal one. Reaper nodded. But what I'm more concerned about is, what happened to you? Azara teared up almost uncontrollably. 
Reaper stood there in silence, unsure what to tell the kindest person that ever had talked to him, afraid of the reaction Azara would give him. It's okay if it's too personal. Reaper turned back to look at her injured body on the ground. I apologize for hurting you and Talon. Azara wipes her tears from her eyes. It, it's okay. We didn't know it was each other fighting against. I'm sad for you, but I'm sad because we're on opposite sides now, and someday me and Tracer will have to end up fighting you. Eventually, or worse, we have to watch you die, and thinking of that is just terrible. I doubt anyone go I doubt anyone is going to kill me anytime soon. Reaper crossed his arms. So now what? Reaper sighed as he grabbed Talon, gently holding Talon's fragile body in his claws. Well, you know, as a Talon member, I can't leave empty handed. Azara nodded in understanding. Reaper had to do the right thing for his own for his own good. Azara nodded again in understanding. Reaper picked her up, bridal style, as her body lies in his arms limp, at least trying to pretend to be knocked out. With that, Reaper faded into smoke, heading out of the building as more Overwatch members headed for the academy. Sombra, Widowmaker, did you get what we came here for? Sombra, in her intercom, sighed in frustration. Well, if you were there to help, I would have said yes, but sadly I'm afraid not. Tracer and Mercy are annoying, Widowmaker growled. You mean to say they kicked our asses? Sombra laughed. Yeah, you could say that. Reaper sighed. Well, don't worry about it. We won't go back to Talon empty-handed. Sombra and Widowmaker were confused at Reaper's statement. Wait. What do you mean we won't go back empty-handed? Reaper internally chuck chuckled. You'll see. After being halfway there at Chalon. Uh-oh, Reaper, I don't think Doomfist is happy with you. Reaper's eyes widen. Sombra, what do you mean? Sombra laughed. Well, you see, Doomfist is back with us at Talon, and he don't sound too happy when... With you when he found out that Overwatch approached Talon and got their fun fellow member back from us. Reaper growled. Reaper growled. He hated the fact that he was always pushed around feeling useless. Weak. He hated feeling that way. And didn't know what was in store for him when he got back to Talon. Reaper's Trial, Chapter 3 Okay, Romeo, you're saying you didn't come empty-handed, so you brought a kid? Sombra complained. She's a part of Overwatch, so we stole back more information. That's all that matters. Bring her to Doomfist. He would want to see her. Reaper snapped back at Sombra and walking away. Well, shit. Oh, well, as long as it pleases Doomfist, I honestly do not care what he does. Widowmaker sighed. She helped Sombra take her to Doomfist. Azara woke up shortly after, but Sombra and Widowmaker froze in silence. When Doomfist growled, everyone, including Reaper, got nervous. When Doomfist was pissed off about something. Azara soon got that message, however, Reaper wasn't scared of Doomfist as the others were. He wasn't frightened of him. He was just always nervous, only by a little. Want to know exactly why all those Overwatch agents were able to get in here? Reaper slightly looked at Sombra, Reaper's voice in full aggression mode, a tone that Azara did not recognize as Gabriel at all. Reaper. Reaper froze and slowly looked at Doomfist, standing his ground. Even Sombra, Widowmaker, and Azara were dead silent. Did you really think that you would not be punished? For what you have done. Reaper slightly looked down shamefully. Reaper didn't want to look at back at him. You look at me when I am talking to you. Reaper slowly lifted his head up to look at Doomfist. This is not a game. You let that Overwatch agent out. You let him escape. And you let 
Many of our people die. Doomfist had a snap in his tone. The others behind them were deadly silent. So silent you couldn't even hear them breathe. That is not on me. That is only on you. Reaper looked back down, angered and ashamed. Did you really think that I was going to let you continue to have full control over Talon now that I am back? No response came from Reaper as he stood there intimidated and frustrated. Do not disrespect me. You are in no position for that. Doomfist shot a deadly glare at Creep Reaper that made Widowmaker and Sombra step back silently as Azara could only watch. If anything, you should be begging for your life right now. Because of you, Overwatch was able to infiltrate our facilities. They were able to get that agent back before we were able to get any sort of intel from him. Doomfist shook his head. And now, now you come to me with a temper tantrum. Reaper lifted his shoulders slightly. Azara could tell his anger was only building up. You are a fool. You should know better, braver men than you have. That's when Reaper finally came up and snapped. But he didn't yell he didn't yell full out right away. He used a low voice then began it began to rise. But enough to not consider it yelling. You're gonna dare question how brave I am. You who have been locked away in an overwatch cell. For how long, Doomfist? Hmm? Doomfist didn't respond, only listened to Reaper's anger toned statement. You haven't been here. I, I myself, I've been the one keeping Talon alive. While well, you, you couldn't even take down a stupid monkey. Doomfist cleared his throat. <laughs> 